is vital in helping keep illegal activity from crossing the border. Without any type of barrier, you're talking about seconds to minutes to get from the middle of the Rio Grande to a school area or a housing area and get lost. This is the fence that currently runs through downtown El Paso. It's called the Tortilla Curtain. And if you look, you could see where it's been repaired from all the times people cut through it. This is what it's being replaced by, the steel barrier, which will stretch about four miles through downtown El Paso. This steel barrier here gives Border Patrol agents the seconds and minutes that they need to apprehend people that are crossing the border illegally. Jose Romero told me in urban areas, this type of barrier is vital, not only to keep illegal activity out, but also in saving lives for those trying to cross the canal. So if we can put up a barrier that keeps people out, children, elderly, injured, or anybody in general, keep them out of that waterway, that's a huge life-saving experience right there. Traveling north, you'll see the double mesh steel barrier. It runs along the Paisano Highway. Before the barrier, it was known as one of the most dangerous highways in North America because of the Juarez gang activity. There were times when they would throw debris across the highway, Vehicles were forced to stop, and then they get carjacked. They get robbed at gunpoint. By the time any law enforcement, to include Border Patrol, could respond, those same criminals were right back, absconding back into Mexico. According to Romero, some areas like the Sunland Park area is also benefiting from the barrier because it's so close to the Mexican highway. But as you go farther, the threat becomes more manageable. In the rural areas, you'll see fencing that looks like this. It's called vehicle fencing, and it's only meant to keep vehicles from crossing the border. This serves its purpose. It's not intended to stop people because in this area, we'll still have time to respond to people crossing. As you head further west into New Mexico, some areas don't have barriers, but because the area is so remote, Border Patrol has the time to respond. There's enough time, and we're talking about days of traveling, to where our agents have the time that they need to interdict, to detect that entry and interdict that entry and stop it from going into the interior of the United States. Of the 264 miles of border in the El Paso sector, about 184 of those miles have some sort of barrier.